excited. Hi, everybody. I'm John Paduchak, johnpaduchak.com. And over here I have. Oh, there. You mean hey, over, yeah. over, over, over here? <laughs> I'm Dr. Christopher Vogelman, somewhere down here. Of Maximize <laughs> Your Media and Life Beyond Practice, our group for coaching doctors to develop their online businesses. Oh, and by the way, Maximize Your Media is also developing a group which is going to be starting pretty darn soon. It was a little mastermind that happened last night and today between Mama Maggie and yours truly. So oh, awesome. That should be fun. That should be fun. Yeah. And I'm Troy McDonald of the group Live Event Marketers that can be found on Facebook or liveeventmarketers.com will redirect, redirect you to that group. And we cover um, marketing and business related things uh, to live streams. So you can talk about live streams, uh, equipment and live streams, which is what I'm doing to kind of get you know, more people to be more engaged as far as talking about things. However, the big focus as well is posting your live streams or events in the group that are business and marketing related. And in, in advance, I would hope. Yes. Or sometimes, you know, some people, they, you know, they throw something together really quick, like, oh, hey, let's do this. And then they, they just do it or they just find out about the group. So if you happen to have something that's just like coming on, like right now, you can post it in there that, that it's happening right now. But it ideally gives the people, your attendees, the possibility to attend your event if, you know, you, of course, post it earlier so they can schedule it, that kind of thing. That's good. Cool. Hmm. So on today's agenda. Product creation. Product creation, create a product. I mean, we're not talking. We're not talking sparks flying in metal shop or wood shop. We're talking <laughs> products as opposed to services. Products that can be delivered digitally and can be consumed by your audience, providing you have the right distribution network. Like email. Troy talks about email as distribution. It's a good one. Why couldn't? Why can't we say that a a um, a product could be a service? Could be. Uh, well, I mean, we discussed products, but go ahead, do your services. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of see like, you know, the scope of what product creation is, again, is something that you can then offer your customers. So whether it's a service or, you know, an actual product, which is a, you know, either physical or it's a digital base type thing that takes them through some kind of training or learning, you know, that's fine too. But I think, you know, a, a, a product as well can be a service. So, um, you know, if you created a product that allows you to generate slides, you know, for your, for a presentation, well, that is a product, but that happens to be a service. So you, I mean, you, cause you can sell that service. That, that's just kind of how you talk in SAS, like software as a service. Well, that is the new fandangled way that people like to call it, but you know, to get all sassy on us, all sassy, sassy, some, brassy. Of our, some of our social media stuff would be products that we do as a service. So we do the posting, but the posts themselves are is it product. the productization of a service? I'm thinking more in terms of digital assets, that's why I thought we were mm -hmm. talking about. <laughs> no, well, but, hey, well, that's, well, that's what I'm saying, like. To me, a digital asset, again, can be a service. However, you know, I'm not necessarily leaving out the people that are doing something that's physical, a physical product. Yeah. I think, you know, I, my, my focus will definitely be on either, again, um, digital products or a digital service. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I've had experience in both, but I still consider it a product. In other words, something you, I just see this, you can offer somebody else, a customer, a client. So product. would a video a video series would qualify as a product, instructional mm -hmm. video series. Mm -hmm. What about uh, PDFs, PDFs, or other things like that? Yeah, absolutely. All those to me are are products. Um, I don't know. I think we might be splitting atoms, but uh... <laughs> well, no. But because I think I think there's a difference between creating a product like an e-commerce and delivering it to somebody versus selling oh. electrons. Yes, no, I, I agree with that. I, I don't, I didn't, I, I don't see us talking about, you know, creating. I see a t-shirt. You know, crochet. I'm not, a, I'm not crocheting any t-shirts if that's what people yeah. are asking for. Um, I love it. 
Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm not referring to any physical stuff that is more like clothing, but if you want to discuss a physical product, but was more of an information product, information products. Okay. Then that, that I'm would be the physical I'm just, realm, I'm just right? wondering if services is a topic we can, we can cover again in a separate thing, or we can do them both now and then we can mm-hmm. split mm-hmm. hairs or, or split bunnies. This is what they do. We don't split them in your house, John. <laughs> Well, yeah, just for me personally, I, you know, yeah. I just see them as long as this electronic can be distributed, electronic can be consumed electronically, can be used electronically, then that could be either a product, a product or a service. So when, so and I guess we including, including either one of those, but yes, they, they both can be their own topics, let alone yeah. many, many, you know, avenues in each one of those. Well, I guess, I guess that one of the things that I was thinking of, because we both have here at home, we both have coaching, which we consider to be a service. We also have a digital agency, Maximize Your Media, where we provide marketing, digital media, social media services to people, which is in many ways more labor intensive, but we also have a series of courses that have already been created which we de- deliver electronically on the Teachery platform, which is not like Thinkrific, but it's a different platform. So we've actually created the videos plus the PDFs, stuck them into a package, and somebody can access them at any time they want to. Whereas I think the question is, you know, can you access a service at any time you want to? Perhaps with software, if you've got one of those sassy SaaS businesses. Right, and that's actually you know, not to say it that way. I mean, for me, that that is what I refer to it as a product. However, it is a service, but it isn't twenty four seven. You can get in and get access to it. It's not like right. maybe you provide some things, but then now you're you're um, the person running it. So your expert or your coach has to do something with it. Then right. that that becomes a different kind of of model. Well, so, and I'm wondering if I'm wondering oh, if the oh. lines between services and products are blurring because I've seen people like our friend Ben Atkins took a course, a digital course, which was I guess it was AdLab. It was a Facebook advertising course. Mm-hmm. It morphed into a monthly membership and then changed its name. And is is has gone through a couple of iterations, but as a membership, even though the digital assets still remain within the membership group, so. It's almost like everything gets mixed up together these days into some sort of an online business venture. I know. At the end of the day, does it really matter? Because at the at the end of the day, I go to sleep. Which, might be, in terms of pet peeves, in terms of pet peeves, at the end of the day is probably one of my least favorite things. I've heard it in Anderson Consulting. I've heard it in so many different places. Where he says, "At the end of the day," I'm like, "At the end of the day, I'm just." I love so, that, Brenda. Who it's really interesting. So, so Brenda, Brenda says. Um, really know who cares the IRS and the state revenues. Well, I'm not sure. Do. Well, but I'm not sure what she's referring to. Cause I mean, you're going to be paying well, taxes, I, I whether you're doing got, a physical product or a yeah. an online. Well, except that services, services currently in most States are not taxed. Some States they do tax services. Like if you engage with a CPA or an attorney, there are some States that are, at least they're pushing for having a sales tax on those services, mm-hmm. which is a little scary to me, but yeah, they got to get their finger and everything. Always. That, that that's another rabbit hole to not go down. Yes, no rabbit holes now. No, if Alice. So, <laughs> back um, to product creation. Product creation. <laughs> Let's, so, what would you suggest for somebody who wants to create their first product and has never done it before? So, that's just good, as in what? How what? to do it? How what, it should be delivered? What should how? what? Should, what's the easy way to create your first product? Well, first you got to figure out what you're going to create. Yeah, and who is for? I would imagine. Who's for? So who's who's the uh, who's the target audience? Well, actually, I would even take a step back from that. Yeah. What I would do is, what are you doing now that is providing an end result for someone, which then translates into your, you know, a, a customer. Mm-hmm. Because what too many people do is especially in my world, the internet marketing world, people get so involved in it and so learned on it that they feel they have become an expert when they have never really actually sold any kind of thing or worked with any kind of client. And then Mm -hmm. they're selling that information, which not that, you know, they, you know, if they dug enough, they might strike gold, 
you know, um, however, it's best to actually have some actual experience about what you are teaching about from some actual results in the, in the real world. Mm -hmm. I would say like eat eat your own dog food. Yeah. And so that's why I say is already look at like what your expertise is or what, what you, and when I say expertise, that's a relative term. Cause some people like, well, I'm not an expert, but if you're somebody that knows something and has been able to replicate that results with someone else, or just even your own results have proven, in other words, that it works, you're able to get customers and provide them with something, then that to me is a good enough place to start from. Um, And then that's where you would, then I say you go back into where you guys are talking about like, okay, then you can look at like, well, what do I already do? What, What kind of results have I already provided for people? And what can I provide for people or take them through that experience right. of how to apply that to their own business? So if you're yeah. either going to, if you're going to either, so that kind of then uh, looks into two different options. Are you going to show them how to um, DIY, do it yourself? Or um, um, really a DFY done for you and a, a DWY done mm-hmm. with you? Or driving so, while intoxicated. <laughs> no, that's DWY done with you, not DWI. Oh, there's a DWI. <laughs> D- yeah, DUI. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> or DUI under the influence of doing things. <laughs> so Brenda says easy with a question mark. I used to create CDs for coaches to sell based on an interview. Yes, that solves one problem. Um. Well, I mean, easy, easy is relative because if you have your expertise and you're capable of pushing the button to record something, that's pretty easy. I think a lot of people, this is what I really love about live video, is live video broadcasts give you the opportunity to create tons of content on the fly, unfiltered and very authentic without having to worry about having a script or some sort of crazy slideshow, although you can do the slideshows, mm-hmm. except if you try to use Facebook producer studio. <laughs> Yeah, but but well. but the concept of and I, I know that several marketers I know of um, oh gosh two names come to mind and they slipped my mind simultaneously trying to name but, drop but they well no just a couple of these you know Alex and a few others so the thing is that they would actually create their content they would start a membership group of some sort and just create the content week by week based upon their live broadcast either in Google Plus Facebook or something else like you know Google Hangouts something like that or Zoom. And as a result, they'd sell the program in advance of having actually created the program. And I think right. we worry too much about creation and wanting to make it perfect. Like, there's truly, I want it perfect, or I'm not going to let it out there. And finally, the realization is that if you keep waiting for the perfect time and the perfect product and that just absolutely perfect moment, it probably will never come. I'm in agreement with that. However, asterisk right here. Asterisk. I do Put also there. see, yes, I do also see people that get going mm-hmm. and then produce something, but it's not as succinct as possible. So well, that's a lot. That's a lot of people, actually. <laughs> well, okay, I'm being nice, right? But that's what I'm saying. That it's it's great to get started, yeah. But yet they do it too off the cuff. Too okay. I just have the topic I'm going to talk about, and they go on say for an hour when yeah, that really no could need. have been maybe a 15 minute video or and, five or five or 10. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's why I think that just some, some planning actually needs to go into it. Even if you're doing it more on the fly and you are an expert, you know about it. And so you can, you know, talk about it forever, but at the same time, yeah. you need to be cognizant and respectful of the time for people right. that are in there to get from point A to point B. And if you're, yeah taking them longer than they, than they really should be. People can get frustrated from, with that. Uh, yeah. From origin to arrival, escape to the promised land, whatever you want to call it. And I appreciate that, Brenda. She did the old hashtag on that right there. So yeah, yeah, hashtag. I don't uh, use my reading glasses these days. Truth. 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 H. <laughs> so in other words, yeah, you know, I, but I, yeah. I have it. An outline, at least. I mean, I know these 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 individuals whom I'm thinking about. They do have a general outline of what they're doing, but they don't have a series of 25 or 30 videos recorded in advance and produced in the ultra studio of all time. But they still have like maybe five points or seven points or something that they want to 
get Coming. to during a particular time along with a little bit of Q&A and boom, once that's done and recorded and downloaded, that is a piece of content. Oh yeah, I agree in the sense of, um, you know, just getting something out there and then you can actually start pulling out your nuggets and things like that and then almost mm -hmm. redo it, you know, is what I yeah. say, or, or redo your outline because I, let me speak to my visual people out there. So if you, are a visual are you if you're a visual person <laughs> oh my god put your other glasses just, on that'll really scare no, you no no um, let's be nice let's be nice today <laughs> um i find that again ha oh there you go you know i'm gonna so wear my, my shades. <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna wear my shades one of these days because i just i just want to be cool like that my future is so bright <laughs> okay so yeah. i i've again i've been in the industry for quite a long time right and I've been through so many different experiences and I've been part of so many different experiences and I know of other many different experiences that I could talk for days and I'm, I'm a talker and I'm visual. But what I find also is that I can kind of be long winded. This is an example of one. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I can also talk and the the visuals in my mind are going so fast that I can almost get lost because they're 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 coming and I can't translate those to words fast enough. Hmm. So I ideally what I do when I I create my more uh recent projects or products is to just almost like just get it all out. And then I start filtering through to get my points because I, I notice that, okay, I'm repeating I'm repeating, or I'm beating a dead horse right here. Oh, look, I'm beating that dead horse again and again. Watch and for those so, people. Yeah. <laughs> Don't beat I'm, those beating dead a dead, I'm beating a dead log. Is that? Dead log. Is that, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, bad. you're killing plants. Watch out with that. No, but it's a dead log already. Anyway. Oh, it's already dead. Okay. So... It just really it really helps to just get your thoughts more in place, and if you're going to create that product, as they say, on the fly, you know, as mm -hmm. each week kind of goes on, to where you can take you know the feedback from the group in the sense that they're they're asking these questions about it that you oh, know yeah. you need to cover. That's that's fine, but then like I say, sometimes you need to get all your kind of stuff out and then pick the points out to really help you keep more succinct and i don't even say try to do the succinct stuff in the beginning so those people can yeah. get their stuff and move on then you kind of cover exceptions to the rule uh things in more detail etc so it's almost like people can get onto your video let's say it is even 20 minutes long but your first 10 minutes is the point the process the idea the a to b and then all your other goodies kind of can come after that for those who want to hang in and get that extra stuff or they need that extra stuff yeah, here's what I'm going to tell you, and you tell them, and then you tell them what they told you told them. Mm -hmm. so. Right, and then then you can so that'd be the recap, right? That 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 third part. But then if you need to go and then say, and now you know, now I'd like to go into some details or some more examples or some exceptions to the rule for those who are either new to this concept or to, you know, that kind of thing like that. And some other people can be can be intrigued and want to hang on, but the people that are like kind of you know or maybe in the market already but just need these fine tune these fine tuning things that you're giving mm -hmm. um you know have that just you know, that's your that's your point for the video that you're doing right that you're putting together for the content and then have your kind of extras it's almost like the behind the scenes or the deleted scenes the additional scenes the outtakes i mean it's just all the other goodies that kind of add to the experience but not everybody has to watch those to enjoy the movie, you know, the actual what you're what they're they're there to consume with that particular video. And hey, sorry, I, do you know, I just got distracted because when I went to my page, the Dr. Christopher Vogelman one, there are captions that are rolling across this live. <laughs> and I've never seen that before. I must have clicked the wrong button or the right button, depending. on. No, how they've been they've been adding that. Really? Because this is the first time I've seen it on my page. <laughs> That's really Live wild. captions. Live captions. Pretty cool. Anyway, sorry for the interruption and the rabbit hole. <laughs> happens. Nope. I gave you. I gave you my uh, my spiel on 
video yeah. creation along with, you know, doing it on the fly kind of thing where I think that a little, sometimes there's too many people that just are too on the fly. Aren't we a bit on the fly right now? We are. That's what I think. Yes, but it's a different scenario. I mean, we are covering, you know, a lot of different topics, three different True. people. Um, and, and again, again, this is more like really, this is, well, okay, I, I correct myself. I was about to say this is free, so hey, whatever. But the reality is people are paying with their time right now. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree so, with you 100%. So at the, you know, at the same time, I'm not filtering out anything that I wouldn't know, tell a normally like, you know, a client or customer of my own. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, but that, again, I that's what I see in my industry. Too many on-the-fly stuff. So put a little more organization into it. Put it at the beginning. Then have all your extras and whatnot in, in the end if you want. But no. it's really respectful of people's time. People are really about getting from A to B every single day with whatever they're, you know, they're doing. time. Yep. I, agree I like that. the idea that you're going to, you're going to leave the airport. That's your, you're leaving. That's the destination that you're, you're heading out of a certain place. And the goal is to get from that destination to wherever you're headed for that arrival. So you get from the departure gate to an arrival gate. And hopefully it's a smooth flight along the way, but there may be some turbulence as there always is in business. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about doing, product creation using video is that like we've talked about before you can turn that into audio yep. yes. you know what i mean an audio audio format of it um oh and interestingly enough there was a discussion i i ran into on facebook today that was talking about consumption and wow. membership site type stuff um, yeah. making an app for it so that people can actually consume your content they were actually speaking of uh, virtual summits that, you know, who's got the time to sit there and oh, yeah. just... I saw that today. Yeah. And I'm in agreement with that. But what mm -hmm. I'm not in agreement with is the scam that's going on for, you know, how much they're charging to kind of, you know, make an, make an app for this kind of stuff. I just, I yeah. don't know. It's so interesting to see how much people pay for something kind of ubiquitous in a sense. Well, I mean, but part of it, it really is the marketing. I mean, the sales pitch, will, if it's strong enough and glitzy enough, you get a lot of people to pay for a higher priced mm -hmm. service or product, depending on what we're calling. We're doing that. It's a product. For our stuff soon. Um, Brenda says, so I found it depends on the target audience. Some of all the extra conversation, others want just the meat. I agree. And I, I that's where I think that give people the meat in the beginning so that those who want that can get it. And actually everybody, everybody wants the meat. It's like who who wants the the not side the vegetarians, the vegetarians and all that kind of not stuff. The vegetarians. Um what no. you didn't what you what you took from that was that I was referring to meat meat. Sometimes your meat is fake meat. What about or a meat meat? What about a meeting to, about meat? Tofurky. You know what I mean? Like meat? your tofurky. <laughs> when have you had tofurky for Thanksgiving, bro? Um I don't, but I do eat some things that are that are vegetarian. I, I mean, so yes, I mean, vegetarians. Okay. But they want the meat. I understand the core. Yeah. The so I mean, has. everybody does want that, but at the same time, you know, at, if you have then some sides or, you know, the desserts and stuff like that, if you put that on the second half or the back half, then people can get that as well. And it's, mm -hmm. it's up to them, but everybody wants, you know, the main dish we'll say then. Yeah. Maybe not the meat, right? Um, mean the main serving. Can I have seconds? What? Here we go. <laughs> Well, so, so I, I get that too, because it's interesting because I've been working with doctors and particularly my MD clients. It's very interesting. They, you know, you always talk about ain't nobody got time for that. That's the way they feel about a lot of video consumption. And they'd rather have a PDF, which is the transcript of the video that we put out because they're used to looking at mounds of mountains of records and they can scan over all these things. And it's a lot easier for them to pull out the things that they want than it is for them to either listen with the audio or spend the time watching the video. Yeah, actually, if you think about it, you know, a PDF, you can actually go through quite quick compared to audio. Pretty fast. Have, you yeah. actually have to do with the video and audio sequentially. Yeah. Where, you know, you can look for, heck, you can even search for keywords or key things or... Well, have you ever done this? Because I've done this in terms of consuming content where I will actually pump up the audio or the video to some, usually it's an audio, to about twice of what it normally is or one and a half times. And sometimes I'll actually just read the book or the, or the article just by listening to it so it pushes me along really fast. 
I do yeah. Often. Yeah. I know quite a few people that do yeah. speed up the audio yeah. Um, yeah. one and a half to two, just depends on how annoying the voice gets. If it's, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. <laughs> which, which goes, which, which, what is that telling you then? Right. That's mm -hmm. telling you people want to get to the point or get the content, you know, yeah. as, as soon as possible. So I, I think it's actually best to provide, you know, all three modalities. So your visual, mm -hmm. your auditory, sure. you know, for, and then, and then your, your physical, which is more of like the PDF, if they do either print it out or like or hold it in a, in a, on a tablet kind of thing, even like somebody would say, well, that's just visual, but, um, and then it also just, uh, allows people to just, again, consume it however they want to, um, now that we have the technology to, to do all of them. And yeah. uh, Well, the other thing I've seen a lot of people do is they will actually provide you with their slides. If you mm -hmm. hang on to the end of the broadcast, we'll give you a copy of the slides. Sure. And SlideShare is very big on LinkedIn for that kind of stuff. Yeah. However, though, in some cases, if you if you stumble upon that stuff, you know, and you're like, it's, they're just slides, and if you can't make heads nor tails out of it, I mean, there has to be either um notes with it or um okay we get terry saying peter higgins stefan noak kim Irwin. just mentioned some names terry that makes no sense <laughs> but um but yeah like I, so I, i've come across some slides from somebody that i know but i don't always fully grasp what they're they're trying to teach just from the slides. So in some cases, depending on which service you're catching those slides on, or if they just provide them to you kind of just as slides, you know, imagine like, cause I remember like going back to something that I looked at their slides months later and I'm like, okay, I remember sort of this thing, but uh, what's this part again? Like, okay, uh, I see what the slide's saying, but I'm trying to remember what, what was it I was trying to remember from, you know what I mean? Like, so slides in and of themselves don't always but I agree it's another piece of content. I mean, I, I, I found them somewhat valuable in particular if they have enumerated bullet points on several slides. Because that's almost the summary that you're talking about instead of doing a, a transcript of the entire mm -hmm. presentation. Right. But, but I'm very selective about which slides I actually want to save. But again, I, I think really the best way to start out with content is... Um, I say video, video yourself, then you can change it into all the other the other formats. But if you are originally putting your stuff together, so meaning like you're kind of trying to come up with the concept of your product, I think sometimes like, you know, just your phones because you can record stuff. So yeah. for me, what I like to do is just, just get like, throw all the ideas on the table. So if you want to talk about, you know, live streaming, well, man, there's like this area, this area, this, and you start throwing those ideas down and then all the different areas and all the different angles and then have that stuff transcribed. And then you can start picking through and get, putting them, okay, this, this falls under this concept. Oh, wait, this goes under both, but they're different contexts. So I need to talk about both of those. And mm -hmm. that's where you start structuring it. So to put together the outline, I would say, I like to, for lack of a better word, vomit out all the information, just get it all out, you know, and that's auditory for that. I wouldn't necessarily do a video for my prep work, um, you know, for my, for my collaborating, my ideas, you know, amongst myself, you know, um, of what I want to cover and everything. So here we go. I'm going to do, there we go. Um, but that that's how I that's how I I do my my kind of get my outline is just get it all out and I do that pretty much auditorily. Um, you can use you know heck there's many um, live transcribing services or just you know record stuff on your phone you it's know transcribe thing. that later and on and it add later. it yeah add it to your to your list and that and that's actually a good point not just say edit it this is about just getting it out forget the editing editing doesn't happen until later um, just get it all out and in fact. You know, all, all my copywriting friends. That's the biggest thing that that we talk that we we discuss. So um, recently, I was talking to one, and I asked um, I asked him like, so. Well, actually, I did an interview with him, and I'm like, what's the biggest thing that you see people have a problem with when writing copy? And then also, what was like, you know, and then what was your biggest problem? You know, is it the same thing or when you were learning? Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is editing while you're writing. 
So when you're getting uh, so your I, ideas I was out, about what you're writing, I was talking about when before you send it out. Right. Sure and, well, I, wa I wanted to point that out. I wanted to point that out, though. Yeah, that's you and your um, uh, your when your proofreading get in the way. Obituaries. Hey, send me your obituaries. I'll you know. I'll yeah. So so the thing is, when you're getting your just ideas out, there's no editing yeah. invo involved. True. And like sometimes. Reason. For me, being yeah, it's just it's really is just brainstorming, and, it's, and for me, sometimes being visual, I get to the point where you know, like I say, I'll I'll kind of keep repeating stuff or giving a different example of it, and I'm really looking for like the the idea or the the story that's more succinct that really helps that I feel create a more clear image, clear experience for that concept or whatever. So, hmm. Oh, I Terry, Terry was looking to share with her friends and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mentioned her. I went in there to comment, and it started a watch party, so I got the hell out of there quickly. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. That's an example Thanks, of Jerry. what not to do when you're in live stream. <laughs> so, John, have you created digital products, or has most of your stuff been in the service end? Oh, no, I've created digital product stuff before, yeah. yes. What kind of courses, or what have you created? Uh, lots, of, lots of courses on live video, and um, a lot of them are all in the process now of being recreated. So I'm in the process of recreating a lot of courses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do. And we'll be able to purchase them for a low initial cost. Of, of course. Yeah. Anything for you. So um, anything. anything. I, says I, that I now, so I, I'm going to ask for the keys to the RV once the mm -hmm. once the tires are fixed. Yeah. <laughs> It just got weird here for a couple minutes. That's why I walked away. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll tell you later. But okay. um, I've, I've even worked the opposite way uh, of Troy these days where it's so inexpensive to get stuff transcribed. A lot of cases it's free. That um, I'll Where is it free? Um, well, tell, you, tell us. It's sort of pseudo-free in different places. Pseudo-free. Uh, okay. pseudo you'll yeah. share that secret inside your course. And even like Timmy, it's not that expensive. Some of it's quite inexpensive to get done. But um, I've gone the opposite way. Instead of writing things out in big lists, going through and kind of brainstorming them by video and transcribing it out and working it that way too. So, so, you're, saying so, that you, so you're saying that you put yours into, do, you record yours on video and then I take a lot of recordings of mine and then pull the ideas and have them transcribed after. Okay. So yeah, the, the reason why for me, what I, what I had found is that I could do it anywhere, like the audio. Not that you now, not that you can nowadays take your phone and do video, mm -hmm. but it's easier for me just to <laughs> pull up an audio, you know, audio app and record it. So yeah. we have a uh, Rowit in the group, and he's like, uh, or in the live, and he's like, "What's going on here? Just came in." Well, hey, Rowit, product Rowit, creation. We're talking about product creation. We are. How you gonna um, make stuff to sell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think however you you know you get your initial ideas out, um, you know that's that's fine. Just for me, it's been audio to kind of just get all the stuff out, just kind of talk. Um, because usually, if I you know I do the video, and then I have to take the audio and then turn that into some kind of transcription where I can start pulling stuff out. Um, that that's just an additional step instead of from audio right, right to transcription. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, then kind of one of the tools that I use as well is for you know so pulling that stuff out is actually then a, a mind map and yeah. now there's like a bajillion different you know tools for mind ma mind mapping um and so you do you start with the mind map or you create the mind map after you've created your audio i can do sometimes for me personally sometimes both so like if i know some kind of core concepts that i already want to want to cover i'll just, i'll throw those into the mind map and then i'll then i'll kind of go around the mind map and then just start you know, I can start talking about each one of them, or if I already know ideas, I'll just throw that in there. But if I'm like, okay, um, I, I also do want to step back from the technology because I find, I don't know if it's because I'm old, you know, more old school or something like that is you get away from the technology and you just, you know, and, and even, you know, go out for a walk and you're just sitting there talking about the whole thing and thinking about all your experiences and going back. Cause I'm really wanting to dump everything out that I can about it. And being in front of your computer, again, it's easy to get distracted. Somebody's messaging you here and there. Mm -hmm. And, oh, let me just take a quick look at something. You know, again, it can be distracting. So mm -hmm. I do like to sometimes do that se separate or separation to kind of thing to get all my ideas out. 
as possible because I want it to be complete. Now, you know, I may again vomit out all this information and then only take 10% of it because it's really about doing the best that I can to help them get from A to B um, with the final again product. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like we talked about earlier, you want to have your, your main stuff up front, at least this is my opinion, your main stuff up front and all your extras and goodies and also like that you can do on the, on the back part of it. But in order to really do that, you have to, you have to be succinct, but I also like to look at everything so that I can have a complete stuff. Now, have I messed up before? Yes. And what I mean by that is that sometimes, you know, you don't know uh, that your customers are going to bring up some, something you didn't cover or I've had some of those ideas, man, this is the way to explain it. I've got all figured out, blah, blah, blah. And then your people, it's like, brown, 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 brown. yeah, they're all missing. It's not even hitting them. You know, you're trying to get them like, boom, right in the face. Boom. Here's your stuff. You know, I, I got you, man. You know what, you know, I know what you need. And then you find out, uh, no, that didn't work. So, but so, what's, what's, what somebody needs is not necessarily what they want. Well, what I mean is that you know what they want, so you know well, what they that's need. Different if you know what but, they want. <laughs> but you, but what I, what my, what I'm saying to clarify then, and this is example. Apparently, I'm not being clear enough. Is that you think you're being clear on how to tell them from A to B, and it wasn't. In fact, it was a complete bomb. And mm-hmm. this is an example. Apparently, I was a complete bomb with with you. And no. what I'm Okay. I'm just, I was just, what I was just saying is that a lot of times when it comes to marketing, creating courses and other things, we have a very good sense based on the number of years we've been in businesses, both bricks and mortar, as well as online businesses, what people really need. But then we come to find out sometimes when you do test with different focus groups, you can create your own focus group by just starting a course. We find out that what they need is not necessarily what they were looking for, what they think that they want is one thing. Like somebody may think that they want more money so they can get a Lamborghini, but what they really need is a strategy and a clear, a, a, quite a bit of clarity in order to create a strategic plan that they can actually act on. And it wasn't, a, or not the money, it's the experience that the money was going to bring. So for a lot of people, they just, they, they have wants versus what they really need. Right, and so what I'm referring to Mm-hmm. Is that you? You know, you know that. However, Hopefully. the I the idea. <laughs> what I'm referring to is that you you know literally what they need and what they want. Okay, yeah. we're just saying you got that covered. However, your grandiose idea of how you deliver that to them with your your example, your you know your case study, your man, I've got to, this is going to just, man, touchdown. I, man, I, I can't believe I'm so genius and all that kind of stuff like that, but then it bombs. So in other words, you know, you, you just, it, it wasn't clear as you thought it would be. It, it didn't resonate with them as, as well as you thought it would and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm referring to. Sometimes again, you know what they, what they want, what they need, and you, you've got that all taken care of, but how you deliver that fulfillment of those wants and needs can sometimes bomb. And so then you have to kind of either you either redo that module or, you know, you add on as a follow up. Um, Cause you know, yeah, that just, that just happens. And, and I, I, it's, it's kind of been an, it kind of been an ego blow sometimes because I'm like, Oh man, you know, you just feel like, Oh, I really nailed this concept, this part and this so many people, you just see the vision of how they're going to get so much from it. <laughs> and it's a wah, then, wah. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, I think I think you can't always count on having a home run every single time. I mean, venture capitalists will invest in ten companies to get one winner. I'm just and saying, of course, I, not every I think we've all done this, though. Oh yeah, you know. I've had I've had my two thousand dollar course with zero sales and lots of ads behind it. So <laughs> and that's why we usually get people to pilot our course or test it out yeah. for us or try it out before we actually release it to the, to the general like public. Your, your alpha group before even your big group. Yeah, just to make sure that it's gonna be a, be a success. Well, and that's, that brings up something. I'm wondering, how do you determine what the market really needs? Do you look at things like Google Trends? Do you do keyword research? How do you discern what a good idea for a product is going to be? Product research is the question. Yeah. Well, I know, but what does product research entail? 
looking, I mean, looking I was just I was just surmising it. Yeah. Surmising. Surmising. Yeah. That's one of my favorite places just to go around groups and see what people are asking about on a particular topic. Do you do surveys? Do you... I do well, surveys what... too, sure. Yeah. Sure. I, I think it, another good way too is as well as to see what people are already buying. Because a lot of times there is your angle on it or your viewpoint, your experience. Yeah. And, you know, some people, you know, some people do get offended at that, meaning that, you know, they're like, oh, that's just a copy of such and so's and whatever. And you're going to have haters and, and people that are going to, you know, complain, etc. But again, there's a difference between plagiarism and your own, you know, your own take on a particular way of accomplishing something. Right. Um, and if you do have an audience <clears throat> already that you, you know, that you sell to, so like a list or, or something, you know, like that, which I really think you should have something to sell to, not just copy or take somebody's concept, you put your spin on it and then you just try and, you know, run ads to it and whatever I think it's best to test it with a, a, a warm audience, even through like we're saying like the alpha stage and then into a beta or where, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, but that's what I, mean, I like to do. I like to see what already selling. I mean, if you look at what the big major corporations are, somebody came up with what, I don't know who's first seven up, right. Or the lemon lime drink. Then there became Sprite. And then, you know, um, and then uh, all the other, you know, versions of it that there are um, Sierra mist and whatever um, you don't see, you know, the main companies. Well, okay. I know in the background, somebody say, well, they're always testing news that whatever, but I'm like, but in general, <laughs> You know, I mean, somebody comes up and then somebody puts their own spin on name it. on it and spin on it. You know, yeah. this this reminds me actually of taking a book like the Bible and creating a bunch of denominations based on your own spin. Sort I'm of commercial, gonna, gonna, sort I'm of spiritual, sort of commercial. <laughs> I don't mind touching it because the reality is people will always take ideas, no matter how powerful ideas and concepts and philosophies. And they will have their own spin on them. You see that there's a what was the science fiction book years ago? It was the story from Isaac Asimov, the Ten Billion Names of God. And when they finally the monks wrote the last name of God, the world ended. So, but there's a lot of interpretations of a lot of things. People come for different flavors. Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors because not everybody likes pistachio or Rocky Road. I mean, somebody's got flavor in there. So there are flavors of philosophies, there are flavors of businesses, there are flavors of all kinds of concepts or notions. So. Well, that, that actually then brings up the point of why you should, meaning those of you who are watching this, should create your own products. Because yeah. somebody needs like your angle, your spin on it, and you're going to have your audience that you're, you're going to reach. Mm -hmm. um, because it's easy to say, well, you know, that's already been done or whatever. Um, but now that also leads me to another thought, guys, and that is um, product differentiation. Mm. Because how do you stand out then? You know, okay, so I'm Sprite, I'm Sierra Mist, I'm 7-Up, you know. You don't want to be another me too thing. No, I'm doing I'm doing this person development topic on blah, 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 which is the same as so-and-so did. Oh, that's just another one of those. How are you going to differentiate yourself as a brand, as a personal brand? Differentiate, but also is it at the same time – an interesting quandary because if you come out with something brand new, people don't understand and it's not, you know, something proven that they already kind of know like, okay, yeah, I understand that. I get it. It works. Let me see what this person's angle is. Is it, is it, you know, best to come out with something brand new that nobody knows what it is and you have to take all that time to kind of brand it. Or do you start again with something else that's already out there and you put your spin on it and then you can be then well, just cut up in the mix of everybody else. Well, in terms of physical mm -hmm. products, that was Steve Jobs' model for the iPhone. These phones, portable phones or cellular phones already existed. He just changed the design of something that would already had a degree of popularity, and he wasn't the first one out. No, he did the same he, thing with the, um, the first word processors that came out. Yeah, and sort of like the build the better mousetrap. First, mm -hmm. see if somebody has a mousetrap and see if you can do it better. Because the Mac, the Mac when it first came out looked a lot like the Xerox uh, word processing system. Yeah, it was really similar. We had both. <laughs> I couldn't believe different it. flavors. Yeah, yeah. 
So there is room for that for sure. So how do how do you make something though? Um, how do you make something a better mousetrap? Well, sometimes it's just the design or the exterior of it. You know, if you have a mousetrap that's made of platinum instead of steel, it might be marketed to a higher end market. So going after so going out after a different segment. You could go after a high ticket mousetrap <laughs> audiences who really want to capture their mousetrap with the latest technology and the coolest finishes and features. So Special I think cheese. that special cheese. <laughs> special <laughs> cheese, yeah. Imported cheese. <laughs> I think it's also, you know, about the experience. And if yeah, you those, those mice who get caught in that high end mouse trap probably have a better experience, at least temporarily. Temporarily. <laughs> <laughs> well, whether it's a, either a live release or if it's a, yeah. yeah. Um, a beta so, alpha. Yeah. So, um, Rowit, and I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing your name correctly, says everyone comes with their own experiences of the same thing. No shame in sharing your point of view. Um, uh, just your way, you know. Mm -hmm. I I I agree with you, and that's that's um, that's what we are talking about, and that actually then comes back to of having your own audience, so your own list that you can mm -hmm. market to. They have already kind of demonstrated, you know, they like your vibe, and that's why they're on your list and everything. Um, but then let's talk to the people who are just starting out, right? Well, I have nobody. Well, look, right, bro. Sister, so, Bob, Bob Bro. <laughs> the reality is, you you everybody starts at zero. Okay, so yeah. you got to oh, yeah. start. You know, with your first subscriber, your second subscriber, and then, um, as a, a famous friend told me, a famous friend, a friend of mine, mine told me, you're, you're name dropping in terms of famous friend, anonymous, yeah, famous friend, yeah. <laughs> well, a friend of mine, many years ago, when we were both in the, um kind of leaving the direct response world. So we used to do like mail order and things like that and fax blast yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we were just as the internet was just kind of, you know, coming along and, and whatnot. Um, and, you know, uh, we're making a little money here and there, both doing our own things, but we would always talk about the things. And we lived actually near each other here in Utah. He since moved away to, he lives in Washington. We still keep in touch. Um, but I was, um, I was always talking about, you know, like I say, being younger, I was always like, yeah. And, and, and you know the million dollar this and that and thing and he's like okay well look first you got to get to five thousand dollars a month and then ten you know what i mean again he just reminded me again that you have to pass through certain things to, to reach a certain point but you also start at the at the lower end first and that's what everybody needs to do because they hear so many stories of the success and we all have our own success that we can you know we can talk about and we kind of do do that as well as a as a draw to bring people in to see that, Hey, here's what this can produce. Um, at the same time, we need to remind people that wherever they're at there, it's a journey and that you can get there too. But you also got to understand that I started out with no list whatsoever, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then, you know, and then the first subscriber and the second subscriber, and even like in live event marketers mm -hmm. with my group, I had, one person as a member and uh it you know just it was just a friend of mine and then now you know we're up to like 540 members or something like that in you know a little over a month's time but again you start at zero and just you know you as consistent as you as you know being consistent is what continues to to have it grow mm. um so anyways that that's that's my thing just to kind of keep in mind for people and I have one other point that I want to talk about for uh, products that unless you guys want to add anything else to what I'm just saying, I'll, I'll, I'll hold it off, but any other, okay. No, wait, I think the floor is open. Please, no, okay. we'll maybe. So the other thing that, that I think is, is again, cause I'm referring to, you know, having your own list or your own group, your own kind of tribe, your own following that you're, that you're right. selling things to. Right. And of course you're always tracking new people into that. And other people are leaving, you know, just their, their cycles, right? Ebbs and flows. Sure. Um, what I find too often, again, in the information, info marketing, info marketing information, or, or how to sell online and things like that is too often products are, um, they have a shelf life, so to speak. They're not updated. 
Um, and I didn't, and I'm not even talking about, okay, there's, there's two different angles. So like, if you look at Jeff Walker's product launch, product, product launch formula, if you own it, um, so you have your initial cost and then every year that he reintroduces it, where he makes some changes or adds some things to it, whatever, you can actually buy it again at a reduced cost. So you get the things added onto that. That's not done too often in, in the info marketing world. It's usually like you kind of buy it and you have a lifetime access to it. Unfortunately, that doesn't matter because they don't update it. You, you know, you kind of can't interact with them anymore. Like you met, might have used to, you know, if meaning that there might not have been an interaction in the beginning, but I think you need to set your expectations of your audience so that um, they're not kind of, they don't feel like, well, you know, I'm going to go and get this product, but I'm kind of like a little bit of ways away from actually implementing something like that, but I want to get it on maybe on the deal or I want to get the bonuses that they're offering right now because it may change in the future. And then when they want to get in, they see like it's kind of died or, or dead. So think about how you can either help kind of keep it alive. And even that's just kind of keeping it simmering. So new people coming in, you it's, it's, it's uh, still alive for them. And also, I just think in general, create things that are evergreen. But if it's going to be evergreen, which some again tout, they're it's hard. They're, it's so hard to keep something evergreen nowadays. Well, but but I also see that too many people want to have fifty thousand different products because they're kind of going after the shiny object on the newest concept to create a product on instead of selling a good solid five courses. And then I, then again, if something have has a life, manage the expectations of your people. And you can take, you know, that off the market or whatever and, and kind of do a wrap up, even with the customers you already have, like, hey, you know, this product is kind of end its reaches end of life cycle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And let's have a wrap up. So there's more of a good feelings and it shows that you cared about them from, you know, beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And it just speaks volumes for future stuff going on and just that mm -hmm. relationship with your, your building with them because you make so much more money you know, selling to the customers that you already have than to try and generate a new customer. And we hear that all the time, but it's not implemented very well by a lot of people. And I will also say I'm not perfect, but I I, I do look at the industry and see that, you know, these are some of the things that can solve some of these issues is just, again, close out something, have an end of life cycle yeah. with it and, and have a wrap up, maybe kind of conference or even just a webinar or something like that and and talk about you know how they can just keep using that go forward maybe the information is still there but it's just not going to be so much you know interaction with it or or whatever and you know and that kind of thing but don't just kind of like have people think um okay well it's it was touted as evergreen and then now it's kind of like fizzle well what's happening and you're writing in a support ticket and they're like oh he, he's not doing that anymore I, you know i mean just like it's just kind of like they they live and people still can buy it but yet the product still feels dead it's almost like you're going to buy, okay, I'm going to use a meat reference. You're buying fresh meat, but then you pick it up and it's, you know, it's like rotting and stuff. Right. I mean, like, you know you I mean? should yeah, have checked the expiration. Meat. Date. It's, it's meat. Well, that's my point. If you, But it was sold as like, this is meat and you're, there's an assumption it's evergreen right. or it's even touted as evergreen. And it's like, well, yeah, but see, like this stuff is old. And it, anyway, just take care of your customers. I went I through that a lot, with, especially with live video, you know, to the point where I started to organize things in in terms of what's timely and what's timeless so what's what's more apt to be changing over here and then what's more evergreen and not changing so uh, you know that's another process that i kind of went through is just trying to divide them and split them so that it's easier to fix things later on or come back and make updates or whatever you need to do yeah and so i just think in general if if people think about that ahead of time as they're producing a product. Now, again, yeah. you might not be perfect at it, but you can do little things that sort of put that into place ahead of time where you already know, or you can always manage the expectations of customers because again, we as customers, all three of us are customers. Everybody, you know, here that's yeah. watching the video are, are some form of customer, right? And we have certain expectations. And I know a lot of things are sold, um, you know, in the beginning, and the sad thing is a lot of products still could be sold to this day, but their owners themselves just kind of lose interest in them. And they're, you know, maybe not the shiny object of the moment, but at the same time, they're very valid. It's very valid material. Mm -hmm. 
And if it's, you know, managed appropriately, um, and, you know, I mean, one way that I'm even thinking you could do that is you have an, an intro video that you can update, you know, maybe every six months or maybe a year, and then the rest of the material is the same. So, you know, you're going to talk about, hey, there's old references to this, that, and the other thing, but all this stuff is still valid. And so I'm not going to go through and update the videos, but I want to let you know, you know, here's what to expect. Right. And here's how you should, you know, here's how you should be applying it nowadays. And maybe do another, you know, add on another 20 minutes that, that explain that so that they can then look at the context instead of you sell it to somebody and they go, oh, this is all stuff. It's not relevant. No, mm -hmm. you tell them up front with it, your update video that you do again every six months or whatever it is that lets people know why it's relevant, how it applies nowadays and right. that kind of thing. And so you can kind of push that evergreen situation to be longer. Right. So, In terms of something that's relevant, I have to produce a broadcast for my wife at the top of the hour. So Ooh. I will be leaving you gentlemen. My one word today is continuity. I think most little courses can be delivered as memberships to yeah. keep them current. So I'm exiting. I'll see you guys later tomorrow. <laughs> Sound Bye. Good seeing you. See you. Um, Rohit says, uh, those marketers make money just through product launches, don't care about courses. That's why they keep coming up with new so-called revolutionary product every month. There is a problem with that, too. They, a lot of people do exactly that. And then never change or update or do anything after that. Yes, I, I, I agree with uh, Rollit. I think, mm. you know, it's um, if you want to put the, the words up on there so people can. I can. I don't have access to that or so I would do it. I know, I forgot. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, but, you know, that it's, it's, it's actually a very, uh, you know, good point. And, you know, launches, you can make bursts of money. But at the same time, anybody who has ever done a launch knows that they're, you know, they're quite intensive to do. And um, we did talk about this um, in the in the past about launches where you kind of, you know, you get that burst of cash, then, you know, then it trails off, burst of cash trails off. And that can be good and bad. It just depends on if you then evolve your life around the, um, the ebbs and flows of that money. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, do you want to be considered that person who comes out with... Um, you know, the, the idea of the minute kind of thing. Um, when I worked for, um, for Hobbytron, um, I have this just still lying around here. So in other words, this is one of my Hobbytron trophy plaques or whatever that we got when, when Inc. 500 and stuff. Um, so as the VP of marketing, you know, I ran everything. You can pop that row it off there. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, when, when I ran, you know, all the, the marketing for them, um, we had pretty much, we already knew what we wanted to do, right? Where our end, kind of our end goal was from the owner. But that's the thing. I set up all the marketing from it, from the SEO to the pay-per-click to the, you know, affiliates. Again, mm -hmm. how, how the site looked, um, coupons, everything. So the owner pretty much just got to just sit there, but he had, you know, the idea of the moment because he'd read a book or watch some course or some kind of thing. And, and, um, he would always come in, Hey, Troy, you know, we ought to be doing this, 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 whatever. And I have to manage that. Right. Um, but the reality is we were already, you know, we already take what we have and just can, and just consistently do what we were doing and make, the the money you know the goals that he wanted to have we didn't need to necessarily implement any kind of new things and i think some course and product creators kind of get tired of their own stuff but i think that that's kind of interesting because most business people and marketers what they're trying to do is like we talked about earlier in another live stream mm -hmm. you're trying to create a lifestyle so put stuff in a place that allows you to have that lifestyle. And I see some people that do implement that and you're not seeing them with the idea of the moment and the new product of the moment and all that kind of stuff. They're taking one or two concepts or, you know, things that they have and they're just continuing to just 
you know, generate more customers and putting them in through the, you know, through the funnel, through their system and, you know, and, and, you know, updating it and those kind of things. And I, to me, that's less stressful than again, these, these product launches or ideas of the minute kind of thing. At the same time, some people just, they, they fall to that trap. They get themselves stuck in that. And, you know, um, but I think you can take a step back and say, let me reevaluate how I'm going to go about things and how I want to do things now. So it's not the end of the world if that's your model that you're doing and it's launch and launch and product and product and product. Um, and at the same time, I do know there's two two kinds of person or I there's more than that. But I mean, there are the kind of people that they kind of get bored with maybe their own stuff. It's working, but it's I'm bored of it. I'm bored right. of it. So you have to figure that out for yourself, how to make that work. Or you have to also be okay with launching stuff over and over and over again. But I just, I think it, I would say, I, I think people, you know, say get tired of it. People already get tired of it, but you still can introduce new people into that and you still get customers or whatever. But I don't know. It just, it kind of annoys me as a customer when you're following somebody and they're saying, here's the methodology to do whatever. But then, you know, two years down the road, they're, well, that, they're saying, it's yeah, completely different. Yeah. I was actually kind of giving them, a lot more wiggle room than they should have. It's actually usually less. Here's the new way to do something. Um, when I think that they should still point out the valid form of what you were doing before, because some people then they think they have to completely stop what they're doing. And it's almost like, you know, go on, a, you know, 60 miles down the road and you need all of a sudden do a 180 and start and be doing 60 almost instantaneously in the other direction. Mm -hmm. And then it, but it turns, turns me off as a customer that I'm like, well, I was, I was building my foundation and around what you were saying. And so a lot of the shiny object things can be flash in the pans, um, especially if you're new to anything and you're listening to an expert, you have to kind of recognize, is this something that I can either take advantage of now and I'm going to make a certain amount of money from it and understand that it's going to go away. If you already have that understanding and expectation, then it's a different story. But if you're building on a foundation because you're thinking this expert's giving you something that's you know, time tested and has stuff that I can just, I can build. Cause that's people, what, what most people want to do is they really do want to build something and they can build a lifestyle from it. Hmm. Um, but if you have, so that's the flash in the pan, it's like lifestyle crash. Cause now that, that, you know, methodology or system, whatever just doesn't work anymore. And it's usually, I don't always like the word hacks because hacks to me are flash flashes in the pan. Typically they're taking advantage of a kind of a loophole or something, how it is right now. Right. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't take care of those, but you have to understand that that's what you're doing. And it's that not it's not a long term strategy. Yeah. It's not long term. Yeah. So, so on that so, note, on that should note, we, should we wind it off there for today? Yes, absolutely. Your, your, your final thought on final product thought. creation. Um, the biggest thing that I see a lot of times is just people just don't really understand their audience and, and don't go through the exercise of really, really getting to know who they're creating something for and that there's a real need and just really digging deep. And um, they try to be too general or they try to extend beyond that boundary. And even if you're too specific, you're better off being way too specific than too general because you'll end up attracting people outside of that audience by accident. You're better off doing that than being too widespread. So that's one of the big things that I see that's kind of my pet peeve. Yeah, I actually agree with that. I think to yeah. um, be more specific than try to be the jack of all trades to, um, to everybody, because then you're not, if you're the jack of all trades, you're not serving. I mean, so then you, you know, maybe you're now you're covering eight, eight things versus one or two more specific kind of niche areas of that. And you're not serving, you know, those eight segments, you know, as best you can kind of thing. Um, and then I do agree with you that it's know your audience as, as good as you can. I mean, granted, you're going to learn more and you're going to, you're going to even have people. So like even with my group, there's questions that come up. Hey, can I can I post this or can I do this or is this video fine? You know, this live stream kind of fine to post in there. And you're like, oh, I, I, yeah, that's a little bit different angle I never thought about. So things are going to come up, but yeah. you can roll with those and make that part of you know your 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 product, your content stuff. Um, and I I do um, agree the fact of or, or what we talked about in the beginning is is to 
get all your stuff out and then to, again, like say kind of more niche it down to not just cover everything. Yeah. Um, because then the other thing is it's so much content for people to do that they'll never do it. Um, and you know, whether you drip it or you make it all a lot, you know, make it all live all at once, it's just too much for the, you know, for most people. And, oh, and yeah. cause even as it is, most of our customers don't finish what they start. Exactly. Beginning. Exactly. So, um, kind of make it a, I would say suggest even if you're going to start out to do to doing a product is come up with, with a concept and you're going to teach, I'm going to teach you A to B. Yep. And that's not, you know, here's how to come up with an idea to sell your, um, your information on how to become the, you know, the best photographer. And that's going to now cover cameras to use, um, you know, websites to use to distribute, you know, if people want physical prints and here's how to sell things from your own site and here's how to do keyword research and did it, you know I mean? Oh man, that's just like, first off, you're probably never going to get done. Second off, you know, there's, that's just too much. And you're not going to know how to hone into the audience. That's really looking for a specific thing, such as how do I sell my digital prints online in physical format? Right. That kind of thing. You know, yeah. like uh, whether it's, you know, you'll print it out on, on, uh, you know, the, uh, what do they call it? It's like the, the, the material. So it's actually like a real, like a real painting, like a painting. You ever seen those? Oh. Where you can have a photo that's put onto the canvas. The canvas. Yeah. That's the word canvas. I'm like, I can't even think of the word. I'm like, what's that? You put the paint, you know, so there's so many different ways, you know, that they can do those nowadays. I know. But anyway, so, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so again, uh -huh. focus, focus, like John said, um, and then really get everything out though. So that, so that, and then take that and make it more succinct into something kind of concentrated and people can really expect from you that when they buy a product, so, you know, it, it, you know, you can even take that huge one and make it, just make them in all into separate products and people yep. can pick and choose from when they need them, but make them so that they, when they go through it, they can go from A to B and get that result. People want to pay for results. So um, and I see too many that at, at the end, you're kind of like, well, I, I got the concept and I got what they're kind of teaching, but I really don't know how to, you know, execute this and actually get that result. Like, what should I do this or that? And then, you know, sometimes you, you know, there's no interaction with the course creator or it's too much of your own time kind of thing. Um, so then you're, it becomes a high paying job, which we've talked about, of course, in a previous live, but. Indeed, we have. So, so on that note, thanks, thanks for joining for us. It. Yeah, thanks, Rowett. I hope you get to join us uh, next time too. And Terry as well. Yep. Bye, guys. And Brent and Brenda and. <laughs> Brenda. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you. See you later.